Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video we will talk about the Solana blockchain and how you as a developer can get started with building your dApps on Solana. This video has been made keeping new developers and beginners in mind who have some general knowledge about smart contracts and dApps. We will look at some high level concepts, tools and technologies you need for Solana development and if that gets you excited, hop in and enjoy the ride. Solana is a high performance blockchain that offers a high throughput and very low gas fees. It achieves this through its proof of history mechanism, which is used to improve the performance of its proof of stake consensus mechanism. Now, talking about development on Solana, there are certain pros and cons. The pros are that the developer tools like the Solana CLI, the Anchor CLI, and the SDKs provided by Solana are great and are easy to understand and implement. But since the ecosystem and such tools are very new, the documentation that's there is not perfect and lack necessary explanations. That being said, the developer community in Solana is very strong and people will be eager to help out another fellow developer. I strongly recommend joining the Solana Discord server and the Anchor Discord server to be updated about the latest changes in the ecosystem. Also, if you are stuck in your Solana dev journey with any technical questions, a great place to get your problems resolved is the Solana Stack Exchange. Now talking about the Solana Web3 Stack, it has a very nice tooling ecosystem. And to begin with, let's talk about the Solana Tool Suite. The Solana Tool Suite comes with the Solana CLI tools which makes the process of development smooth and easy. You can perform a lot of tasks with the command line interface, ranging from deploying Solana programs to transferring SPL tokens to another account. Let's come to Rust. Solana smart contracts called programs can be written in C, C++ or Rust programming languages, but the most preferred one is Rust. Rust is a low-level programming language which has gained a lot of popularity due to its emphasis on performance and type and memory safety. Rust can feel a bit intimidating at first, but once you start getting the hang of it, you will enjoy it a lot. It has a very well-articulated documentation which can be used as a good learning resource too. Some other resources for Rust include Rustlings which has been provided by the Rust organization itself and Rust by example. Now comes Anchor. Anchor is a framework for Solana's C-level runtime, which provides several convenient developer tools for writing Solana contracts. Anchor makes our lives a lot easier by taking care of a lot of boilerplate code so that we can focus on the important bits. It also does a lot of checks on our behalf so that our Solana programs remain secure. Anchor Book, which is Anchor's current documentation, has some good references for writing Solana programs using Anchor. The Anchor SDK type doc has all the methods, interfaces, and classes you can use in your JavaScript client. The SDK does need some better documentation. You also need a front-end framework. For your users to use your dApp, you need to have a front-end client which can communicate with the blockchain. You can write your client-side logic with any one of the front-end frameworks, you know, React, Vue, Angular. And you need to have Node.js installed in your systems if you want to build your client using these frameworks. Now there are some bonus additional technologies which you can use in your Solana dApps. The first one is Rweave. Rweave is a community-owned decentralized and permanent storage protocol. Now, what Rweave is mostly used for is to store media for NFTs. You know, the images that are produced for NFTs, those are mostly stored on Rweave. Next comes Metaplex. Metaplex is an NFT ecosystem which is built on top of the Solana blockchain. The protocol enables artists and creators to launch self-hosted NFT storefronts as easily as building a website. The Metaplex NFT standard is the most used NFT standard in the Solana ecosystem. All the links to all these resources will be down in the descriptions. You can check them out. 
Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it a lot and learned something along the way. One thing I would like to say is that Solana development might feel a bit intimidating at first, but if you stay consistent, you will start to appreciate the beauty of the Solana ecosystem. Just keep yourself updated with what's happening, be active on Twitter, and try to contribute to open source Solana projects. And if you are stuck somewhere, don't forget to visit the Solana Stack Exchange. That's it from my side. Have a great Solana dev journey out there. Bye.